a Walker and Bird's Eye View on Sports Radio ESPN 1420. Oh, well, everybody's heard about the bird. ESPN 1420 and ESPN1420.com. Hi, welcome in. This is Bird's Eye View. It is uh, the middle of the week. It is Wednesday, the 21st day of January. Do you have a, do you have a, uh, a date on your watch there? No. Okay. So I'm guessing it's the 21st. It is. I got a little thing right here to, that, that told me. Scott Farmer, Raging Cajun Director of Intercollegiate Athletics. Is that your official title? Something like that. Close All right. enough. All right. He's here. Look, I, I told folks if we had time, they could email, email me some questions and, and we would get to them. Although there are a few topics that I feel we need to talk about. And then after we've done that, if we have time, we'll get to the other stuff. I do, however, want to go ahead and, and get one of these out of the way before you and I start talking. Um, barbecue sauce on chopped pork, which is the best vinegar based or mustard based? Oh, that's a tough question right there. Um, cause I like all kinds of different types of barbecue and barbecue sauce. Uh, probably have to go with the mustard based. Yeah. see if I had a choice between those two, that's what I would, that's what I would take yeah. as well. And, um, when we were in Statesboro, we uh we were at a place that that did wings and and they had um several different sauces to choose so we asked for exactly that mm. mustard based vinegar based and then some other stuff and mustard based got my vote okay. yeah you know and again i really do i like a lot of types of barbecue and 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 of course that means you got to like different types of sausage but sausages but if I tell you what, if I had to choose one, I think I'd go mustard base. All you right. ate at a great barbecue place. Vandy's is really good. Uh, Vandy's was wonderful. Really good. Wonderful. And if anybody needs a recipe for Brunswick stew, you folks let me know. I don't know if you read it. I wrote a blog about that. Yes, I did. I and and did. Uh, I actually had some people from that area say, I didn't realize Brunswick stew was like a regional dish. Mm. And I said, yeah, you don't order that in restaurants yeah. around here. <laughs> All right. We, uh, Scott and I have got a lot of things we want to, uh, cover, uh, on the show today. And, and I'm not going to say, okay, well, this is the most important. There, there are actually four different, uh, topics that I want to get to today. And we've had some listeners get in touch. And if, uh, we have time, we'll get to those as well. And, and one is just a proposal that, uh, that has been thrown out into the air and we'll see what happens. With it, but there's been a proposal that's come up that would create an early signing period for football, which is the only sport that doesn't have an early signing period right now. It would be a 72 hour period in the month of December, about mid month. What was your, uh, what was your first reaction when you heard about that? You know, well, the first thing I do is I go talk to my football coach. You know, I, I want his thoughts on it, his opinions and, and, um, you know, then I kind of marriage that with, uh, you know, my 25 plus years in this business. And, and, um, you know, I go all the way back to when early signing periods were first put in. Um, and, and it was in the sport of basketball. You remember, I'm sure that, and it was put in to try to, to take some recruiting pressure off that young man or young woman, uh, their senior year. So they could sign early, get that over with. Coaches I've already signed and just enjoy their senior year and play great basketball. And uh, it's kind of evolved into now it just means that we have to recruit you earlier. And we have to start seeing you, you know, as a sophomore. And as a junior, we make up our, our other minds so we can offer you, early, you know, early in your senior year. And, and, and that part of it, I don't like. The part that we are having to recruit young people as early as we are 
and and so many coaches feel like they need to get verbal commit commits from these young men and young women. I, I don't think that's fair, and and I don't think it's good for us that that we're getting verbals from freshmen and from sophomores and you know quite honestly even from juniors. Um, I, I think we need to back off of them a little bit and uh, let them mature and and get better not just athletically but academically and 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 let them be students a little bit more before we're putting the pressure on them to decide where they're going to college the month of january is traditionally if you look at it the month where you see folks who may have issued a verbal pledge to one school uh do what we what we call flip and and uh, issue a pledge to another school uh, instead, and and the intensity, especially when you're talking about Power Five schools, Power Five conferences getting involved, really gets ratcheted up in the month of January. Um, do you think that having something in December where you've got this 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 kid that's committed to you, and maybe the big school hasn't invited him yet, uh, do you think that that could possibly benefit? A school like UL, as opposed to you know somebody from you know A and M or 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 wherever. Well, I guess there's always going to be that possibility, and in a perfect world, I would say you're absolutely right. But what I'm saying is the early resigning period of the other sports has just led to us recruiting them earlier and signing the whole class earlier. So you're just moving the process up. In other words, it's different when. Right now, because the signing period is the 1st of February, what's going to happen if you just move it up a month or like this, six weeks, everything just moves up six weeks. So those flip floppings will be in December or November instead of now they're in January because you're going to have to go. You're going to want to take your official visits, which now are in January. And that's when big schools are getting in. And that is when, you know, you see some flip flopping going on out of curiosity. What was the uh, reaction from the football staff when you talked to them? You know, again, Co- coach was uh, a little traditionalist. I think he, he sees that, you know, these three weekends in January are important and there's a lot of, he's a detailed guy, a lot of attention, a lot of time goes into every aspect of these weekends. And for him trying to do these weekends during the season, seem like a little much or trying to do them during that high school players season seemed a little much also so um it wasn't he wasn't overly excited about it scott farmer raging cajun athletic director our guest uh here on bird's eye view this afternoon it's interesting because when you talk and 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 i talk i caught i talk to fans and, and and if i don't talk to them they're on my facebook page talking to me um and, you know, when you start talking about you know, important topics right now, you know, they want to talk about conference realignment. They want to talk about um, uh, what, what we're doing to raise money. They want to talk. All of that stuff's very important. We're going to get to that. I don't know if there's a more important issue right now in collegiate athletics than what the group of five is going to do about cost of attendance. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. In fact, I think that's probably the most significant thing in my entire career, in my 30 years, 25, almost 30 years now, career in athletics. This is this is somewhat of a game changer. And um, this cost of attendance is is making the playing field uneven. And, you know, since... I've been involved and, and really go all the way back in time to, to 1906 when the NCAA was formed. You go back that far? I personally don't, Jay, okay. but I, I know you might, but I don't. There you go. Um, you know, the, the leveling the playing field, trying to keep things as equal as possible, has been one of the founding principles of the NCAA. Well, this cost of attendance just threw that out the window because cost of attendance, uh, let, let me back up. Let me try to simplify it for everybody. Since day one, a scholarship could be tuition fees, room, board, and books, period. Tuition fees, room, and board, and books. So no matter where you went in the country, that's the most the athletic department could pay, tuition fees, room, board, and books. Well, other students on campus have been able to get what's called up to the cost of attendance, which includes tuition fees, room, board, and books, 
but also some travel money to and from home, some spending money. Just that there's a formula, the, the, there's some federal guidelines that has a formula in place that each institution can utilize to follow to set their cost of attendance. Well, athletes are the only students on campus that haven't been able to get up to cost of attendance. We capped ours at those five things that I mentioned. Well, now... Okay, so student students can get what you're talking yes, about. Yes. As but, part of a scholarship. Yes. But can. student athletes cannot. That's correct. Okay. That's right. correct. Student athletes up to this point could not. And, and I was unaware of that. Yeah. Now so I'm learning something. Yeah. Now That's they why can. That's I called you. But the, but the difference is, again, because the cost of attendance is set on each campus, it's slightly different. So the cost of attendance at school A could be $1,000 a semester more than school B. Now you have a recruiting advantage. But that's what, that is what has just been passed that is set to go into effect this coming August. So you can, you can get online right now and you'll see some schools screaming because the competitor has a higher cost of attendance. And in and, and theory, we'll be able to offer their recruits more money than they'll be able to offer. That's, that's a game changer. It is a game changer, and at the same time, you just had, out of 70 schools, 69 of them say, yeah, let's do this. Even though they may not have the same cost of attendance within their own conference. If uh, Boston College, who the rumor is, was the, the one school that Correct. voted against it. Correct. If Boston College does not have the same cost of attendance as, say, another school in the Atlantic Coast Conference where they play, I mean, is that not an advantage right within your own league? And if that is the case... Why would all these schools say, yeah, let's do it? Well, uh, one of the many, and there are many, lawsuits against NCAA, the NCAA and its member institutions right now is an antitrust case that says that the NCAA member institutions have gotten together to limit the amount of scholarships that these students can get. That's an antitrust situation. Mm -hmm. So the lawyers that have advised the these conferences have said, look, if you try to limit it, you're, you're, you're going to set yourself up for a lawsuit again. So I think everybody was running a little scared and, and, and trying to figure out the best thing to do. But I don't, I just don't know if we shouldn't have slowed down a little bit more, thought it through, let some of the legal things come out. Because again, this is a game changer. You can have uh, young men and, and young women sitting in living rooms now with coaches basically accepting bids. How much are you going to pay me, coach? Because so-and-so is going to pay me X amount. And I don't know that that's what's best for college athletics. How does this work for the group of five? The, um, is it a, a conference? Each conference is going to go ahead and vote whether or not they're going to participate in this? Or is this a done deal that they're going to? Or is this going to be done on a school-by-school -school basis Help me out here, because I want to know where we go next with this. Well, the group of five has already voted on school by school. That was the number you just said, 69 to one, 59 to 1, I guess. No, I, that, but I thought that that was the power five, the group of five being the I'm Sun sorry. Belt, the Mountain I'm West, sorry. the uh, I'm sorry. American. Let, let, me, let me go back. So the one other thing that the, the power five has got to do is now at the, each of the conferences vote on it, and then I think we'll, it'll be said it'll be a law, which then allows – the group of five that you asked me, I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't understand the question. The group of five then has to decide what they're going to do. It's permissive legislation. We can choose to follow it also. We don't have to. We can. So, yes, every single conference would then have to, within themselves, have a vote to see what they're going to do. Um, and they could go along with it or they could cap it at a certain thing or they could leave it up to each institution. You know, right now, uh, we've kind of obviously been looking at this at UL, and, and if we went to our cost of attendance, we're looking at about a million dollars a year more in scholarship dollars. It's a lot of money. A lot of money, especially when we just uh, are hearing something about a $300 million cut to, to higher education. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, I mean, we're studying it. We're looking hard at it. And uh, and I know it'll be a hot topic amongst the uh, athletic directors within the conference here. And, and, I mean, everybody wants to do everything we can for student athletes, but there's only so much we can do. And understanding that, my next question is how can you not do it? Because of the fact that, you know, if Conference USA decides they're going to do it, 
or it, and and that's the one that's geographically closest, which is the, the probably the league that you compete with recruits, the American to an extent with Tulsa and and Houston and and Memphis. If they decide they're going to do it, how can the Sun Belt institutions not do it? Well, it's it's literally it's just a matter of run, running your business. You got expenses and you got revenue and you got to balance it. So if we decide we have to do it, then what goes? I mean, does the amount of money we spend on summer school get diminished? Does the staffing get diminished? Do we not travel like we've been used to traveling? I mean, something's got to go. I mean, I don't think anyone's out there printing money. Well, they might be. (laughs) Well, that kind of leads you into how do you raise more money, and that's a good time to go ahead and take this uh, commercial break. Scott Farmer, Director of Athletics at the University of Louisiana, is our guest this afternoon, and and we're going to talk about Raising some money when Bird's Eye View continues after this on ESPN1420 and dot com. To the insurance company that did me wrong, I've moved on and I'm happily insured with another. Bless your pea picking heart. It was just never meant to be betwixt us. You gave me automobile insurance apprehension, and Geico has come along and in just 15 minutes given me new car insurance and made me as jubilant as a newborn lamb in springtime. Yeah. And Paul has given Geico his approval. That's one thing you never had. Joyful with another. Clara May in Columbia. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Here's a tip from Glenn Lachelet with Eagle Pest Control. It's harvesting time, and that means an increase in rodents. Mice, rats, and other small creatures will begin looking for new shelter. If you need to take care of a rodent or ant problem, put your home and comfort in the hands of one of Acadiana's most trusted, respected, and experienced pest control companies. Eagle Pest Control. Call 898-1936 for a free estimate today. Click the banner on the radio player now for more tips and advice from Eagle Pest Control. In this season of national elections and insect infestation, it's time to speak up and protect your interests. Yes, now is the time to sweep your house free of incumbents and set up some serious termite limits to rid the house of those nasty roaches that only have their own special interests in mind. Don't be influenced by the mainstream praying mantis or the biased bedbugs. Let your voice be heard and stop the pests today. Eagle Pest Control. Hello, Acadia. This is Glenn Frisch, General Manager of Acadiana Dodge. We are your number one selling full-on Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram dealership at Acadiana. One reason is we don't do Grinch deals. You know, the kind you don't want to touch with a 39 and a half foot pole. We pride ourselves on doing deals other dealerships don't or won't. During our big finish event going on now, every 2014 is on sale. All Dodge Darts, 4000 off. Remaining Jeep Wrangler Unlimited $5,000 discount. America's Import, 2015 Chrysler 200, and the most awarded SUV in history, Grand Cherokee, $6,000 off. Every 2014 Ram 2500 Heavy Duty Diesel 4x4 Crew, $10,000 off. And Ram 1500 Crew Cab Big Horns in stock, $13,000 off. Some of the best presents don't fit under the tree. America's Premier Supercar, 2013 Viper SRT GTS V10, $30,000 off. That's almost as good as a partridge in a pear tree. Ring in the new year with an Acadiana Dodge in your garage, located where you've been buying Dodges for almost 50 years, under the big American flag across the airport. Listen live anywhere at ESPN1420.com or find us on Radio Pup, the app for your mobile device. We're everywhere you go. Sports Radio ESPN 1420. ESPN 1420 and ESPN1420.com. Jay Walker, Bird's Eye View, Scott Farmer, Raging Cajun Director of Athletics. Uh, our guest uh, this afternoon. We'll get on to our next topic in a minute, but I do have a follow-up question about the cost of attendance thing. And, and it's the one thing, and, and I've had a few people ask this on the show, and I've told them what I thought the right answer was, but I don't know the right answer, and so that's another reason why I asked you to come in. <laughs> when we talk about cost of attendance and we talk about scholarship athletes, student athletes that are uh, that would get this, 
What about the student athlete who was on partial scholarship? Do those student athletes get partial cost of attendance? Well, actually, that was something that was uh, highly discussed in Washington last week. And what they settled on, and again, I believe this is true, too. I wouldn't mortgage my house on it. But what they're actually just going to do is change the denominator in figuring out that partial. Whereas before, the denominator was tuition, fees, room, board, books, whatever that equals. Let's just say for simplicity's sakes, $10,000. And a person was given 5000 That's one half of a scholarship. They got 50%. Well, now that denominator is going to be tuition, fees, room, board, books, plus those miscellaneous expenses up to the cost of attendance. So the denominator changed. Does that make sense? Not really. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, it just, All right, explain the denominator. Okay, in figuring out an equivalency. Okay, you're trying to you're trying to get a percentage. Okay. of how much of a full scholarship you got. A full scholarship used to be tuition, fees, room, board, and books. Okay. All right, that's the denominator. That's on the fraction. That's the lower half. In my example, it was ten thousand dollars. Right. So the baseball coach, the baseball softball coach, coach, if you're given a 50% scholarship, it's $5,000. $5,000. Okay. Well, now that denominator, instead of being 10000 is going to go up to the full cost of attendance, which might be fourteen or 15000 And so if someone is on 50% scholarship, would they still get 50%? I guess is what my question is. Right. They could. It's still up to the coach. The coach could give you 50%, which would then be $7,500 of, of half of 15000 or the coach may just keep you at 5000 and have more of a percentage to give other people. There's two different ways of looking at it. But, but the percentage thing it, it, it is something that, and that's what I was getting at. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, a, a, a student athlete who is not on full scholarship is not going to get full cost of attendance. That's, that's correct. That's kind of what we're... That is correct. They're okay. not going to get full cost of attendance. It's a it's headache, just, Jay. It's just driving you crazy. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, we're spending a lot of time on this, and and you know, it doesn't quote go into effect until August first of this year. You no, know, well, August first is right around the corner, dude. I got news for you. And you also have scholarships to write in two weeks. There you go. February fourth is signing day for those people starting school. August first. All right. What's been so. the reaction of the rest of the administration about this? What's what are you hearing from Doctor Savoy on this? What uh, what are the, what does the rest of your staff think? Well, the first thing is we are trying to get our hands around it. Uh, let me be perfectly honest with you. We uh, met a meeting today with the director of financial aid. Had a meeting today with the head of our compliance office that manages those scholarships and all those equivalencies, and we're trying to make sure we understand it and that we can apply the new rules properly. That's the first thing we're trying to do. And then we're going to have to put models up. We're going to have to figure out some way to fund this. That's what we talked about a little while ago. It's about a million dollars a year more for us. We're going to figure out something to do. We, we rub sticks together, and they, they sometimes produce dollar bills, but not all the time. Well, let's talk about how you produce dollar bills. The, I like uh, it. The Raging Cajun Athletic Foundation General Fund, $2.1 million this past year. It's another... Uh, another record. You've had a, a new record every single year. Uh, total contributions. I, I want to say Wayne Elmore said back in uh, back in September or August, whenever it was, uh, was right at about seven million dollars. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Does that sound right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. It's going to take more than that, and we know it's going to take more than that. You're trying to build 115 million dollars worth of facility improvements. You've got uh, you've got cost of attendance now. Uh, to uh, to worry about. You've got all sorts of other staffing. You want to get your general fund budget up because the Big 12 is not going to let you in if they all have million, uh, $100 million budgets and you don't. Um, and, and I just use them uh, as an example. Um, so you're trying to get that number up as well. So what you going to do? <laughs> Well, right now, the way you're describing it to me, Jay, I'm about to go bald. All right, <laughs> my hair's already gray. You're you're not painting a very pretty picture. Um, you know, several things. And 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 since we've been here, we've taken a multi prong approach to this whole. It's not just fundraising for us; it's revenue generating. We we, um, we we think we have to be better in every area. And you know, in the last five or six years now, our, our budget has doubled, and, and I'm very proud of that fact because we've done most of it 
almost all of it externally. We've, we've done it by uh, selling more tickets to, to, to all the sports. I mean, our attendance and, and our ticket sales, our season ticket sales in particular, uh, we're setting records in every single sport this year. That's a good thing. That's a positive. That's a way our fans can help us right there. Um, obviously, our corporate sponsorships are very important, and we're trying in the in the last six months, we're really starting to put a little bit more emphasis on that and trying to trying to do a better job with with corporate our corporate partners. Uh, but that's the second way they can help. And then obviously this RCAF, they're very very important to us. And in the annual fund, you know, six years ago we didn't have one, and this year at two point one million, that's a, that's great. That's two point one million or twenty five hundred donors. Just think of what we could be if we had five thousand donors or ten thousand donors. So we're going to continue to push that hard. And not necessarily just asking people for more money every year, but asking people to help us attract more people. Because I think there's a lot of evidence out there now of, of, of the better we do externally, the better we're going to do on the fields. And, and, you know, we just had our, our best year ever this past year, and it's because of this, this support from these great fans that we have here. And, and it all kind of ties together. So ticket sales, uh, corporate sponsorships, and fundraising combined, we can make that up. We really could. Um, we don't want to confuse the donors and do too many new things because I don't want to get into a whole lot of it, but everybody knows we did our, our facilities master plan. You mentioned $115 million to do all the projects in it. We're tier one projects, all three of them, or one of them's done, and two of them are underway right now. And, and we're working hard trying to get tier two get started, which is a complete renovation of baseball and football. And, and that's going to take a lot of, of private dollars to get that done. The last time you were here, and it's been quite some time since I uh, put you in that chair and, and, and tied you to it so you couldn't get away. I didn't even see this new studio. That's right. You haven't seen the new studio you yet. You like this, huh? It's big time. It's kind of nice. Um, I asked you then, you know, with with what, you know, I'm going to say this, and, and there are going to be folks out there that are saying, oh, Jay, you know, quit painting this picture. But, but, but the, the fact of the matter is, I don't know if there's a more understaffed athletic department in America than there is right here. Um, you could uh, you could probably use about another ten full time people uh, to go ahead and uh, and get the things done that are getting done. And all you got to do, folks, if you don't believe me, go to any anybody in this league and take a look at their staffs, and you're going to see they're a lot bigger than what uh, than the staff that uh, that w- the university has to work with here. All right, I've said all of that. You lost an awfully good man in Ken Widstead a little bit over a year ago. There are a lot of folks still waiting to see what's going to happen with that position. Now, you hired Rob Stewart to come in. He's your senior associate athletic director for external affairs, and raising money is part of what he does. But there have been some folks that we've been hearing for a while now that there's going to be a full-time executive director for the RCAF. I asked you last time you were here, you said hopefully in four to six months. Update us, tell me where we stand on that. Hopefully in four to six months. <laughs> I don't, I mean, it, it is moving exactly like we talked about before. The RCAF is uh, kind of reorganizing right now, um, and they have expanded the uh the, the board from, from seven members to 24, uh, they have formed a seven member executive committee. Um, they're going through some, uh, processes to become a little bit more independent. And, uh, at the end of that is going to be the hiring of an executive director. Um, I, I, I still don't have a date. I, I still think we're probably within that original four to six month time period. Well, the four to six um, month time period is almost done. From the last four time months, might here. be. I don't four know months. Six, four months. Okay, so, yeah. so, all right, yeah. can I pin you down? Say, hopefully within two months. Well, yeah. I mean, I hope so, but I, I'm no, not I understand. House, I, yeah, I, I, so. I understand that, uh, that you don't get to make that yeah. call. I yeah. get that. I, I get that. But, and, and if nobody wants them more than I do. So, you know, cause like you say, that's an extra fundraiser right there. That's somebody else out on the street helping and, and I'm looking forward to that day. If you're, uh, yeah, and if you're trying to do $115 million just for facilities, you know, my guess is the folks that are working in uh, development and the uh, and Rob, you know, he, he's a young, energetic guy, but you know, he's he's probably not going to get that done all by himself. You know, Rob is, has come in and, and, and done a remarkable job and, and his strength, knowing we were going to 
again, divide the position really into two positions. His strength is in the, the corporate sponsorship side, the marketing side. And so that, that's, uh, that was strategically done that way. And then, yeah, we hope to bring somebody in that is, you know, just 24 hour day fundraiser, just somebody that's constantly working in that regard. Do we know who that person is? I mean, because we, we, you know, Ken's been gone a while now. Have, has that person been, tar- and I'm not going to ask you to name him, but has that person been targeted? Do, no, we, do no. you know who you, who it is that you're going to go after? And I say you, and I say you collectively as a university, right. not you personally. I think that the the university uh, that you you just talked about. I think we have the profile of of the position we want. I think we know basically the experience level we're looking at in the in the you know person with the experience and the knowledge and the energy to come in here and do it. I don't know that. We've taken all that and identified the exact person yet. I don't believe that's happened. Um, when we when we talked last time about this, uh, you talked about if I'd written it down, I'd I'd know. But it, basically, <laughs> basically, when you start talking about the restructuring of the Raging Cajun Athletic Foundation and making it more independent, there were uh, eyes to dot, T's to cross, lawyers to get involved to work out that part of it with the state. Has that been, is that completed? It's not completed yet. It is, it is further along. It's progressed nicely, but it's not 100% done. And that's why we don't have a, a, a job position announced and posted and, and, you know, accepting applications for the director yet. Once it gets done, we will start that process. Lawyers in the legislature is what you're working on, or, or is it, or is it lawyers in the, uh, in the University of Louisiana system? Is it lawyers in the, uh, lawyers and who? It's, no, it's, it's foundation lawyers. Foundation yeah, lawyers. It's foundation lawyers. Yeah. All right. So this is, uh, but you're hoping a couple of months. Sure, All sure, right. okay. I um, let's see what is today. No, let's see. Two mo- exactly two months from today is March 21st. No, <laughs> I know you'll write that down, Jay. Oh no, no, I will write that one down. Um, does it frustrate you that that's not done? Well, again, you know. And nothing in higher ed moves at the speed you want it to. I can assure you that. Yeah, I know. And 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 are there times that it frustrates me? Absolutely. You know, because I'd like to check things off the list and move on to the next. And the list is pretty long. But quite honestly, it's kind of like with tier one and 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 getting it started and and getting the first project complete. Now getting these last two projects complete. When it's over with, you look back and and in the higher education world. These things went pretty darn fast. So is is fast. it may not move as fast as the private world wants, but in higher ed world, it, it's moving pretty good. So I think, um, you know, I, I would I think I'd be remiss if I didn't say I think the the uh, the fundraisers that we have and the RCAF board and the volunteers that are, are working with that are really doing absolutely a wonderful job in yeoman's work. We have uh, we've been we've been setting up to do a capital campaign. We've been doing all the behind the scenes things. We've been we've been getting ready for quote the quiet phase, if you will, and and the work that's been done is just absolutely phenomenal. And it's energizing to me because uh, you know when you sit in the room and and you hear these volunteers talking and these businessmen that are excited about what we're doing in this department and the exposure that we're bringing to. The, the Acadiana area and the exposure we're bringing to to UL and 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 just see their faces light up. It just makes us want to work even harder. Define quiet face. Well, in in the old days, it was a quiet face. No one knew what you were doing. You were going out <laughs> and you're hitting uh, a capital campaign is pretty highly organized. It should be highly organized. This one is very highly organized. And and basically, Jay, you, you do what they call inside out, top to bottom. Inside out, meaning you go to your leadership, the people on the inside, and you ask them for gifts first because people want to know if you're going to ask them for money that you gave. All right, so inside out and then top to bottom. You go to the to your best, your, your number one prospect for the largest gift, and you ask that person, and you try to raise a certain percentage, 50 or 60% of your target before you take the campaign public. And so we are in a quiet phase right now. And, and okay, so uh, let me just make sure I have this right, because I'm not as sharp as some of the folks that are listening out there. Um, so by the time you hold your press conference and say, today we are announcing uh, the the public phase of our capital campaign, you already 
in a perfect world would already have 50 to 60 percent of that goal already raised and not talked about to where folks out there might say, well, when the hell are they going to do the capital campaign? You know, you're, you're right. You want to you want to have asked your your bigger key donors. You want to have the money in and you want the campaign to be successful. That's exactly right. Given the perception and I'm talking a perception over a couple of decades of of the university kind of moving behind the scenes to to get things done and folks feeling like they're just not a part of it because nobody's talking and understanding what you have to do with the capital campaign. What do you say to the folks who say, OK, here we go again? I say just just sit tight. I promise you it's going to be live here before you know it. Again, there's too many people involved, and and that's why that's why quiet is not a very good word anymore. I mean, here we are talking about it on the radio. Yeah, we're talking about being quiet. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. I mean, people know we we did the whole planning study. It used to be called a feasibility study. Now they call it a planning study, where we interviewed, uh, we had a consultant interview 50 people from around the city. They know it's coming, and again, we we've, we've made some. Uh, we've made some one-on-one meeting asks already. We have a whole campaign committee set up. And there's people out there that know it's it's coming. It's just you're trying to do it in an organized fashion. There is a science to it, and that's the one thing that that uh, the, the consultant brings to the table is to you know keep us moving in an organized fashion so we don't stub our toes. Um, you talked about phase one, and and I guess the biggest. Uh the biggest thing about phase one now, I think, for a lot of the fans is the Athletic Performance Center. You know, for me, you're getting track and soccer done, and that's needed to be done for a while because that was just not a good situation. Right. And, and that's, but if you don't, if you're not into track or soccer, you, you know, that probably <clears throat> doesn't mean that much to you. Athletic Performance Center, back when, uh, the, 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 uh, ceremonial groundbreaking was held, um, last summer, there was a hope that, by the time the 2015 football season was ready to start, that the building would be complete. Is that going to happen? You know, the, the deadline is still September 1. Okay. okay. It's still in writing is September 1. And I know the, the Lemoyne higher-ups are working very, very hard to have it done before then. So, you know, they started putting steel up this week. It's starting to take shape. That's exciting, you know, just to just to know that you go out there and you're starting to see how big this building really is going to be. So, you know, it's a great construction company, and, and what they did with our dorms on campus was phenomenal. So is, would it be fair to say, hey, look, it's going to be in the ballpark of there? Oh, it's going to be close. It, okay. It's going to be close, I think, yes. All right. Um, you know, because, as you know, weather, there's a oh, lot of sure, factors. Sure, So, But I'll say it's be darn close, yeah. Um do you have a target date for track and soccer for that facility? Same that date. September Same 1? Same time, yeah. Also September 1? Yeah, sure is, yep. Um, and, and Lon Bado and Scott Wheeler are sitting there, big smiles on their faces. <laughs> it's amazing. They are. I saw Lon today, and you're right. He was sitting there just grinning ear to ear, and because that's going to be a very nice, too. They have a great competition facility. This is now the amenities that go with it. Well, and, and you know, we all have our pet projects. OK, and, and obviously we know what Lons and Scott's are. Right. And, and I know that they're excited and they ought to be excited right. because it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a boon to their programs. Um, there are other folks who's, you know, who their own personal priority might be a different part of the facility. And the one that everybody talks about is part of phase two. Uh, and that is the, um, the 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 redoing, the refurbishing, the whatever uh, to MLT Moore Field. Right. Uh, I know that there are some folks that have uh, that have said, you know what, what can we do to push this project forward? And you said from the very beginning, yeah, it's phase two. But if we got the money, guess what? It moves up real quick. How's that? How's that coming? Well, again, if if we get the full funding for the project, you know, we will move it up immediately. Um, And we have had the limited ask that we've had thus far for this campaign. We've had very good success. and, And there are there are some people very excited about doing something to the Teague. So, uh, look, we're ready to go. I can't wait to have it happen, too. There was an article in the um, – in, in one. I don't remember where the article was because you've got a couple of newspapers now that are covering UL full-time um, about uh, the possibility of a negotiation with Cox Sports Television to expand the television footprint of all UL sports. 
Uh, I know that's, I don't think that's something you're directly, uh, handling, but my question to you is, we haven't heard anything about it in a while. Can you kind of update us on where we are with that? Yeah, you know, it, it's uh, it's something that, uh, you know, we started and we have to kind of turn it over to people that have more time and more expertise in the area. Um, we, we meet on it every week, though. You know, it's just, it's, a, it's something that I think both sides want to have happen, and that's a good thing. Um, the, there's a third party in it, and that's ESPN, and it gets complicated with the with the contract that ESPN has with the conference. So we are trying to work through those hurdles right now. But I still maintain my optimism because of what I first said. Both sides want this to happen. We want it to happen, and CST wants it to happen. And so I think we can work through everything. It's just taking time, you know. There is... That subject that leads to a follow-up question, which leads to our next topic. This is a good time to take a commercial break. We will do it, and we will uh, visit some more with Scott Farmer, Raging Cajun Director of Athletics, uh, after uh, this time out on ESPN1420.com. Don't just make a New Year's resolution. Make the right choice, and make it the all-new Service Cadillac. Shop Louisiana's largest selection of brand-new Cadillacs and get incredible offers on every one, like Motor Trend's 2014 Car of the Year, the impressive new 2014 Cadillac CTS at Service Cadillac, the perfect marriage of luxury and sport. You'll feel the excitement once you get behind the wheel of the new CTS. Plus, Service Cadillac has a great selection of new Cadillac ATS and SRX models. Right now, enjoy special introductory offers, generous service Cadillac discounts, and incredible financing on every brand new Cadillac. Plus, we still have a few remaining 2013 models in stock, all with our most aggressive incentives. So log on to CadillacAtService.com for all the details. Or come see us at the all-new Service Cadillac. Ambassador Caffrey in Lafayette, near I-10. Here's another tip from the cooking expert, your locally owned and operated Piggly Wiggly. As you work toward making 2015 a healthy year, make the right choices when it comes to cooking. Broiling meats and vegetables are always a healthy choice, and because of our great climate here, grilling is also a wonderful option. And eating healthy doesn't have to cost a fortune. Try ground chuck, chuck roast, and whole chickens. Have a great new year. From your friends at Piggly Wiggly. Click the banner on the radio player now for more expert advice and tips. Fresh, clean, and the best prices around. That's your locally owned Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly understands the very best and freshest choices are important to you. They also know a clean and comfortable atmosphere with helpful employees make your shopping experience the kind you'll want to come back to. Excellent selection of delicious seasoned meats, licensed florists, and weekend blowout sales. So much more than a grocery store. Locally owned and individually operated. Piggly Wiggly in Scott, Rain, Church Point, two locations in Opelousas and Cecilia. Have you ever wondered why we say something is up to snuff? It was originally used to describe someone's physical condition. Apparently the sense of smell is the most sensitive of the five and most easily upset by your general physical condition. So if someone is able to smell or sniff, he is up to snuff or in fine condition. And now you know why. Today's lesson in autonomics brought to you by Service Chevrolet Cadillac. We all know facts don't lie, so let me present a few. First, Chevy has an incredible lineup of award-winning SUVs for South Louisiana. Second, Chevy Equinox gets better fuel efficiency than Toyota RAV4 and Ford Escape. So hurry to Service Chevrolet Cadillac and get a brand new 2015 Chevy Equinox, now just $21,990. That's less than $22,000 for a brand new 2015 Chevy Equinox at Service Chevrolet Cadillac. Check out these offers and hundreds more at servicegm.com or come see us at Service Chevrolet Cadillac, 1212 Ambassador Caffrey in Lafayette near I-10. Chevy, find new roads. Based on fueleconomy.gov, 2015 EPA estimates MPG Highway, FWD, RAV25, Escape 25, Equinox 26. Actual mileage may vary. MSRP 25395, sale price 21990 includes 250 rebate, 500 bonus cash from GM, and 2655 dealer discount. Stop number T150407. See dealer for details plus tax tag and dock fees. Ends 2215.
We are Lafayette Sports Authority. Sports Radio ESPN 1420. ESPN 1420 and ESPN1420.com. Scott Farmer, Raging Cajun Athletics Director, is our guest on the show. we got about eight minutes to uh, to cover what we've got here, and, and we'll get to as much of it as we can. Okay, we talked about uh, the the negotiations and the proposed contract and the fact that CST wants to do it and UL wants to do it. And, you know, but uh, there's other stuff involved and you got to go ahead and, and get everything worked out. I guess my question to you is what, what is the biggest benefit in your opinion, if you're able to get that contract done? Oh, I, you know, there's, there's a lot of benefits, Jay. What is the biggest, you know, first and foremost, probably just simple name recognition for the University of Louisiana, period. The Raging Cajuns. I mean, all of a sudden we will be uh, in six, eight million homes on a very regular basis. Uh, in today's day and age, when uh, the school balances his budget with tuition, if we can play a role in, 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 in increasing in that enrollment and in, in paying those tuition bills and bring, generating revenue that way, that's the biggest thing we can do for our university right now. And so I think this is just an enhancement of that. That's just one. You just asked me the biggest. That's what I think might be the biggest. But there's, a, there's definitely a lot of benefits in this package. Let me ask this. There has been a lot of, a lot of flux within a neighboring conference over the last five, six years. They've lost membership to the American Conference. They have taken membership from the Sunbelt Conference. And there is a, a discussion that perhaps there may be an opening there. So many times when we start talking about that particular league, Conference USA, for those of you who are saying, what is he talking about? <laughs> um, that when we talk about Conference USA, that it's market size, market size, market size, market size. And, and if you look, yeah, they add, they go to El Paso. They they add uh, the, the two Florida schools, which is Miami, and then they add Middle Tennessee, and which kind of gets into Nashville and all of that. If you're able to get this done, does that, in effect, increase your market size because of the number of people now you can potentially reach before you even are a part of that league or the Sun Belt or any other league? Well, I certainly think it does. You know, I th and I, again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be telling the truth if I said we haven't thought that because we have. I think that's a, a, another benefit of, of, of this partnership if we can get it signed, sealed, and delivered. But, uh, again, I, I, that's, that's going to make us a, a more marketable uh, institution to, to any league. Because that's a big that that this could be again one of the biggest things we've ever done. This is a could be a very big time uh, TV deal. When it comes to conference affiliation, you're almost damned if you do and damned if you don't. You know, you as the athletic director can't sit there and say, "Gee, we don't want to be in this league anymore." I, you know, that would be uh, that would be suicide. You can't do that. Uh, and uh, and if you say we're happy where we are then uh, there's a lot of your fan base that's not going to, to, to like that either. So I, I, I'm, not going to get, I'm not going to ask you to make a statement about it. But I, I remember when the first time that I interviewed you, you said that you felt your job was to make the athletic department as attractive as possible to any conference that might want to take a look at the University of Louisiana. How are you doing with that? You know, I, I think in in the um, seven years since we made that comment, I think we are a completely different athletic department, completely different. I think from our budget to our coaches to our competition level, not just in one or two big sports either, all throughout the, 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 the all of our sports in, in the department, I think uh, we have significantly changed the perception of, of this athletic department and this university. And I'm excited because I think seven years from now we can have the exact same conversation. I think we will change that much more in the next seven years. So, um, you know, I do. I, I remember making that that comment because everybody looked at me like, "What?" <laughs> it was again. It was in in a time that no one was even thinking conference 
uh, expansion or, or conference maneuvering back in 2007. And I remember making that. And, and But I, I think that is one of our jobs, and, and, and I think that's something that, that we take seriously. Do you know how much, um, and, and, and really, you know, CEOs make the decision on conference expansion. Uh, they, and that's true in every league. In some leagues, some commissioners have more input than others. Sure. Um, some are more persuasive than others. But the final vote still comes from the CEOs. And you're not the CEO. And so I'm going to ask you this. Do you know that there has been contact between the CEO here and the CEO and the rest of Conference USA right now? I think you need to ask the CEO that I question. I think you're Jay. probably right. <laughs> I, he can speak for himself. I, he doesn't need me to speak. All right. For him. Well, how? Okay, but you can speak for the athletic director. Have, has the athletic director talked to other athletic directors? Oh, all, we, all the time, all the time, and and not just one league. Uh, you may be referring to one league, but I, we talk to them, you know, several different leagues, and we talk to them quite frequently. And again, because we're trying to get the name the Rage of Cajuns out there, we're trying to to get people to understand. Don't think of ten years ago, think or only think of five years ago. Come, come see what we are today. Okay, come see what we are today. Leads me, and we're starting to run out of time here. Leads me to to the next to the next question. As of today, this may change by the weekend. But as of today, there is no opening in another league right now. Mm -hmm. If there becomes an opening by this weekend, which is when uh, some things are going to happen or not happen at Conference USA, do you do you have some confidence that you'll be able to get some people from that league to come see what you got? I think that that uh, again, we change perception. And yes, I do think we have friends in that league. I think we have friends in the American. Uh, I, you know, I think we have some friends in several different leagues that that have been here, that have done what we said. Come take a look. You know, travel with your football team or your basketball team or your baseball team or your softball team or or when you're going by on vacation, stop by and and let us show you around and let us let let us talk to you about what we've done and what we're about to do. And that's just another thing that that master plan has been able to do for us. We've got it in writing, and we can show people what, where we're headed. And, and I think people, you know, again, in the business world, the, the professional world of college athletics, do understand that this is a different athletic department than it was. So is that a yes, that you do feel confident that you'll be able to get some folks to come and visit? I, I feel confident that we will be a player at the table, we'll be discussed, we'll be a viable option in the future that uh all right we got uh we got 60 seconds you want to say anything to anybody oh no i appreciate you as always having me on and we say it every time need to do it more often but it's just like on my schedule doesn't always permit it's uh it's it's difficult yeah. to do it you know i'd i'd love to be able to sit down with you seriously uh once a month and 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 just get updates on stuff and and I'm going to take a, a lot of the blame for that, for not uh, for not yelling at you more and saying, hey, doggone it, you need to do this. Uh, and that's my fault. But uh, but hopefully we'll be able to have you on more often because there is so much happening right now between the cost of attendance and, and your facilities and conferences and money raising and everything else. Folks that uh, folks that are supporters of the university that listen to this uh, radio station want to get updated. You know, and I, I do have one. Th I do have one thing I want to say. Of all the great things going on in this athletic department, there's a lot of them. I, I want to just kind of say, everybody, pay attention to a press release that comes out tomorrow, because of all the things I'm very proud of, I'm I, I am more proud of this press release tomorrow than I think I am of any of them thus far. So just kind of giving you a little teaser there. Beware. I was about to say, you know, you, in in our business, we say, you know, when you get ready to go to the break, you give them a little tease as to what's coming next. Look what you just did. You could work here. <laughs> I appreciate you coming by, Scott. Thanks so much. All right, Jaybird. All right, stick around because we've got the sports gap coming up next. Ryan Banowitz will. Uh, join me. We'll play fill in the blank, and we'll get uh, uh, we'll give you a Scott uh, a Scott Prather uh, uh, heaving into a trash can update. That's coming up next on ESPN fourteen twenty dot com. As people get older, some of them just can't figure out how to drink.